Hello, Gemini. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. For this round of readings, I've been pulling a card from the Magical Botanical Oracle. It's a new deck for me by Maxine Miller and Christopher Penzak. She is the artist. And interestingly, well, maybe it's not interesting. <laughs> maybe, maybe it makes all the sense in the world. Um, you got vine, which uh, is here the grape vine. And the uh, person here in the middle is Pan. And he is raising his glass filled with wine. Kind of in a salute and to uh, also to catch either the sun's or the moon's rays into his cup. I mean, it seems very right, more like the sun, but I think there's an option for the moon too. Now these readings, I always intend them to be timeless. That whenever you're here, you're here. But here on this day, when I'm recording this, February 8th, 2023. The asteroid Pan, named for the god, is conjunct Uranus. Almost exactly. And so, um, I feel like this is, that even if you're not watching this when this is happening, that this Uranus energy kind of present here in this reading. And it's interesting, he's in Taurus at this time, not Gemini. But that is right, it's the uh, right next door. And Mars, who's moving through Gemini, is uh, going to make a semi-sextile to Uranus. And, the not too distant future. So in your previous video, we said that it was time to go. And I think that if you haven't gone, you are about to. Right? We begin with this Ace of Cups. You are accepting the cup that is being offered. And then right underneath that is this card that feels very Gemini to me today is this great kaleidoscope, right? You accept the cup and poof, right, you're off. And then we have this great first card, totally related, right? The grapevine here, you are, you are taking in this fabulous, these grapes. It's kind of like a harvest happening, right? You're, you're accepting all the goodness. And we've been talking about that too. So there is this bounteous energy and, and this is in this deck. Um, maybe I will quote from it. Vine comes alive as this pan-like satyr of good cheer, straddling the river in the vineyard, holds high the holy cup of vine under the brilliant light of the sun. Vine shows up when things are going well. You have health, wealth, and happiness, either already present or coming your way. And then it says, make sure you slow down to enjoy it and the pleasures of the world while you have them. Keep that in mind as we go. So then there's this lovely healing card here with this new moon crescent in the sky. And then this exuberant uh, airy wash over me card, right? There you are in your red dress. And then the Eight of Pentacles, talent and opportunity 
and uh, work, right? The, the doing coming together, right? The Eight of Pentacles as, you know, doing, doing the work that you enjoy. And then there's the Two of Cups. And this could be uh, actual love, romantic love. It could be uh, a new friendship. It could be uh, a relationship that already exists becoming deeper, more intimate. Uh, it can also be self-love. Um, right? I think it's all of these things. Then we have this waiting for the phone to ring. And I think this is right, possibly that right, all of these, maybe all of these good things have already entered your life or are in the process of entering your life. And this has a sense of um moving through it too fast, right? Just wanting to get on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, rather than pausing to really enjoy what you have. And it can be, you know, as, a, as an Aries son, I really, I sort of start to come alive at this time of year as we pass the in bulk space when I'm recording this. All right, my sap starts rising. And I think that those of us who have either sun or many placements in Aries, Taurus, Gemini, right, that's the spring season. We sort of, we start to come alive at this point uh, here in the Northern hemisphere. And this change of seasons card all right, comes up underneath to emphasize that. So this moon dance right, is the, right, the excitement of something moving forward, uh, the excitement of some risk being taken. I think that Gemini can really enjoy risk. Um, as Aries does too. But then there's this sort of uh, energy of more stillness coming up. So there's the rose garden, which right, makes me think of stopping and smelling the roses. And that actually literally comes up a couple of cards later in this Elixir of Life card. And then there's this under my umbrella, which today isn't so much about protection as it is about the experience. Right, to have right, the experience not just of sunlight and roses, but of rain. Right, a, right, a different sort of weather just to be experienced. And then this listen card, which can be sort of a Gemini card. I think Gemini can have a talent, right, for listening. for taking in, receiving messages, information. But there is also, right, in that really highly mutable energy, the possibility of becoming scattered, of wanting, always wanting a new thing. And our society exacerbates that, right? You know, what's, what's the new thing in the feed? Is the feed all right, refreshing. We've gotten so used to new things and new things and new things all the time. All right, we've turned the dial up to 10. But it never satisfies, 
right? She here in this, right? She seems like she's really gonna savor those grapes. She's really gonna taste them, enjoy them. All right, maybe experience the juice running down her chin. And that's kind of, right? That's what gives satisfaction, the, the full experiencing of something. And for that, the child comes out, right? Children really experience things, right? I mean, they, right, they get down and right, if they have a, a, they get into the mud, they really get into the mud. Right, they may, you know, stick their whole face in the cake. Right? If a child is really enjoying something, right, they can just spend the whole afternoon right in the sandbox or at the beach. Right? You may have to drag them out of the water when their teeth start chattering. This whole body experiencing. I mean, right, that's the other thing about little, especially little kids, right? Like toddlers. You know, babies, right? You stick everything in their mouth. Children who want to touch everything. Right? To experience it not right, not just with their eyes, but with their whole selves. really, really experience it. And these next three cards, right, I sort of feel like they're all of the bits, right? There's the upper world, right? The moving into this new, uh, right, this new timeline that we've been talking about through these readings. And this is kind of the intellectual aspect. Right, the new mental space. Maybe even the new, um, you know, the new spiritual space, in, but kind of in an intellectual way. Right, maybe thinking, right, maybe thinking about spiritual things and how you think the world works and, you know, philosophizing about your cosmology. You know, maybe learning new things like astrology. You know, we're studying texts, you know, Buddhism getting getting involved in that way, um, right? All, all of that upper mind stuff. And then there's the cross, which is the, the more heart-centered space of transition, right? This gold cross, and I associate gold with the heart and with right, with the sun, and actually in our bodies, we do have gold, right, trace gold in our bodies, and a good chunk of it is in the heart. So there is, right, there is gold. So this is, right, the new heart space, the heart portal, uh, the heart aspect of the timeline. And then the sweat lodge, which is the body aspect of the timeline. All right, when you go into the sweat lodge, right, you, you experience it really through your body, right? You get hot earth and water as you sweat. So the new, right, the new timeline for the body. So this, this I think is um, perhaps a, right, a, a cautionary reading to not get carried away, to really spend the time in this new, 
right in this new space. I mean, you seem a little bit Gemini to kind of be leading the way a little bit. You've been getting more readings that are like, yes, it's time to go. Um, some of the other signs have had readings, you know, kind of about, about savoring the transition itself or, or waiting, right, till they're really ready, right? Taking it slow so as to not be overwhelmed and to really, but you um, seem more advised and it may be, right at this moment in time, Mars moving forward, even though he's moving slowly, but it is Mars in your sign. And Mercury, who uh, is the dispositor of Gemini, he's also moving forward fast. He's gonna be out of uh, Capricorn on the, 10th or the 11th, I think, he enters Aquarius. So I think that you are, right, that you may be moving faster than some of the rest of us. And you are being, right, the suggestion, the invitation is that now, right, that you're in this new thing to not just zip through it to really experience it on all levels, right? To, right, to stop, really experience what is happening, right? Each new thing as you come across it, to really spend time with it, to savor it, Because uh, there's a lot, there's actually quite a lot of earth energy coming up here because now we have the 10 of pentacles, the 10 of sacred circles. Right, the full, the full 10 of earth, the earthiest earth. And in this, right, there's a moon in here and then the moon comes up underneath. So also um, a suggestion to not try and know everything. And I, I totally, I feel you. Um, you know, I do have a thing, right? If I learn something new, I'm, you know, quick to run and Google. What, what, is, what is that about? Right, I wanna know more, more, more. What is, um, I wanna know what's coming. Right? There's lots of um, tarot readings you can you know, find online the next seven days, the next 10 days. Um, what's coming? But to, right, to pull back on that, to allow the future to be mysterious, to allow the uncertainty and the mystery. And then we get this princess of sacred circles, the page of pentacles. The student, the novice, right? She's a new mother here, probably her first, right? Her first child, she's learning things, right? I mean, everything's new. Learning about this new life that is growing here beside her. And really taking the time to, right, to savor all the stages, right, of that new child's growth. Um, I don't have children myself, but certainly people I know who have children do talk about this, right, that they want to really enjoy the different passages of their children, right, when they, you know, first learn to crawl and then they learn how to walk and then, right, watching their children grow, that they want to um, really savor all these different stages of their child's life, because it won't come again. And then there's this five of wands, which in this deck, right, is collaborative, 
rather than confrontational. Um, right, so, so being, right, seeing, right, this new space as collaborative with others, that it's a co-creation. And also, right, taking the time to really, right, look at the plan. <laughs> right, when the architects of Egypt right, got down to building the pyramids, they didn't just throw them up. Right, there was a plan. There was, you know, deep calculation and probably conversation about what it should be. And it might only be, I mean, this might be other people. You might be, you know, working as part of a team or, you know, maybe this is you and your family determining things for yourselves. You know, are you going to move? Or are you not going to move? What's happening? Does one of you want to do something new and interesting? You know, maybe somebody wants to go back to school or to change jobs. Right? Or it could be your inner Barts, right? Your inner accountant, your inner adventurer, your um, inner protector, your inner child, all of those bits, right? That there's collaboration there too. And to not forget that. And then lastly, we have the King of Pentacles. Right? The ultimate instability. Right, wisdom. And there's, you know, there's this lightning going on behind him. But he is, right, secure. So if you have perhaps been feeling this Uranus pressure, that semi sextile aspect, that immediately next door space can feel really sort of, right, it can be difficult, irritating, um, if we haven't learned to work with it. And having someone like Uranus immediately, right, next door, right, it's like having somebody sort of gut renovating their apartment immediately next door. There's, right, there's stuff going on, there's pressure. You know, you may feel pressured, right, to gut renovate your own space while it's going on. So being, right, being still and confident in that space of change. And that you have that capability, Gemini. It might take practice, it might be new, right? This might be some of the new aspect of this physical portal that you've passed through, right? Really finding stability in your own body, in your own nervous system. Uh, perhaps finding stability, uh, you know, within your own emotional life or your own spiritual life. It's possible, certainly, that you've been kind of on a quest for a spiritual framework. You know, you've tried all kinds of different things and now right, you're coming to a new synthesis of your very own and really learning to live in that space. And take the time to do it, because that's, right, like, this is life. Life is not the next thing. It is here now. This is life. This experience is part of the, part of the fun, right? Learning the new thing, really, really feeling it, really spending time in it and with it. And then on the advice front, the Ace of Pentacles, right? Emphasis on the pentacle. And right below that, there you are. Traditionally, your card, the lovers. The heart-based choice card. The union of opposites card. The marriage of differing forces. 
creating a whole greater than the parts. Then the King of Swords, right? Intellectual maturity and clarity. Discernment. Control, right? Not running off after everything. The Four of Wands. Um, stability of passion. Right, creating a home, right, creating a structure for yourself. And this doesn't even necessarily, right, have to be real, right? It doesn't have to be that you've bought a house and a land and are, you know, but that internal stability around your life. And then the Nine of Cups which is the wish card, but for me, more often than not, it's the emotional maturity card, right? The emotional equivalent of the nine of pentacles, which is about, right, having stability of your own resources. <clears throat> so this is stability of your own emotional space. And it, right, it's a sort of real maturity, Gemini. Not the, you know, kind of thing we learn about what it means to be an adult. But real maturity. Right? Really knowing yourself. Um, knowing your own nervous system, right? Knowing what your triggers are and how to manage them. The willingness for intimacy having good boundaries, honoring other people's boundaries, having internal stability rather than requiring it from the outside, having internal confidence rather than requiring external validation, having a free mind to be able to make your own choices and um, you know, know what is true for you, right? Standing in your integrity. And, right, as I think I've said in another reading, these, these readings, right, aren't necessarily just for Gemini. I think that, that each of these signs is kind of giving us a different aspect of this timeline shifting space that we're all in. So I think it's a message for everybody, right? That, that we need this new conception of adulthood and maturity and to really embody that and to be it as we move through the world, right? So you can absolutely, right, be pan and have a deep draft of sacred wine and you can enjoy it and savor it fully you can fill it with the light of the sun or the light of the moon. And then you can hold that space, right? And not become drunken. So I think this is, right? I think Gemini, you are, right? You're sort of leading the way. This Gemini energy is leading the way for us. And I am grateful. And I'm excited for you that you're going. You've, you've accepted the cup. I wish you all the very best, Gemini. And I will see you next time. So long.